Offsite dirt. Topic for today, materials for construction. We're focusing on materials that are used in new construction projects. So, you've seen a lot of wood, giant wood pieces that are engineered. How are they connected? It's like this. The reinforcement system that allows the posts to be mounted and all of the fasteners are preset on where to connect and the type of fasteners you would connect to make your columns strong and stable. We keep going. Mass timber is a topic that you'll keep hearing again in your meetings. One form of mass timber is cross laminated timber. So CLT is the acronym they bring in. You have a layer coming this way, a layer coming this way, and a layer coming this way. You could have up to seven layers. They will be varying thicknesses. It depends what the structural engineer calls for. We keep moving forward. And here we have fiberglass insulated framing. So fiberglass behaves roughly the way wood does and has very low conductivity, which means the energy transferred is less your steel members. What that also means is your sound quality of the space will be easier to control. You have a fiber cement panel, a little bit more difficult to see from your angle, but this is done again to create added durability to your structure. You have a dense glass exterior sheathing. So this is going to include your WRB properties so that when you add the insulation elements to the exterior, this will now be your line for vapor to stop at. We keep progressing. Cascadia clip. They're integrating a little bit of metal and back to the fiberglass. And this is going to allow our cladding to the facade and still be attached without the thermal transfer, but enough space for the insulation to fill and for the condensation and drainage that gets passed with bulk water to go to breathe down and out. But the fiberglass, again, is not conductive. You have mineral wool insulation. I'm touching it with my hands. This can be used in a bat form, in a blow-in form. There's many ways to deliver and install it to the building. It has some properties that other insulations might not have. It tends to include an R value that's stable at various temperatures and at various wet. Our cladding will indeed get wet. And also, this does not burn. So in the, in the areas where code and the people designing the building need to add that into their wall assembly, that's an attribute to look for. You have a T-stud. This is engineered wood. How is it engineered? They start with a two by three and a two by four, certified and stamped, and then it's separated by dowels. And that space in between creates what we call a thermal break. And that thermal break is then the cavity for insulation to be put into it. Let's say a blown in cellulose, blown in fiberglass, a blown in mineral wool, or perhaps a spray foam. Next, bird safe glass. More and more our buildings that are put up in our environment have more glass. We call them glass boxes. However, the birds don't see the glass. It's the last thing they see before they hit it. So the bird glass allows their way of seeing to pick up on don't have the impact and they could go on to other routes. The material world, if only we have Madonna's voice today telling us how exciting it is and how we could dance into our new buildings and enjoy the benefits of the materials that we just saw because each material we just saw is a stepping stone to the next great idea. That great idea is yours and how you work with your team allows for it to implement the actions of those around you and that example is copied and copied again. Join us next time on Offsite Dirt as we dive into more topics just like this.